Bro, so welcome to SFX Zero Profile Production, and the next part is Sakura Forest Girls 2. Well, so we can simply say, Ariel just kissed us. And it's a little bit of a problem to get, uh, considering we are together with Diana, so let's we'll see how all this is gonna play out. That's because Ari dips her head and presses her lips to mine. Hmm? <laughs> it's surprisingly a deep kiss coming from one who seems as anxious as Ari. My lips part in shock which Ari uses to her advantage. Her tongue approves my mouth while her fingers curl about my arms. She pulls me close until our chests are pressed together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Harry sights uh, into her kiss, her eyelashes fall shut, her cheeks pink with uh, passion. Do I move her hair skin the bleeds are uh, against mine? I can hear her heart uh, beating in tandem with the uh, mine, smell the perfume which rolls off her in waves. Mm. Though initially surprised, I find myself relaxing into her kiss despite uh, myself. Harry is a uh, Adorable, after all. It's unthinkable uh, that such a sudden show of affection wouldn't stir my heart. I'm glad she likes me so much, but something about it doesn't seem quite right. Harry says she loves me, but how can she? She barely knows me. This is all feels very sudden. Harry, please. I draw my mouth from Harry, then take a step back. My lips uh, are damp from her saliva, but uh, her my heart pounding fit to burst. My legs feel weak and my face is flushed. Yeah. My palms feel all sweaty. Now how should I respond to her uh, affections? Ah, uh, this is such a hard choice. I mean, we can't say we think about it because we are technically together with Diana, and I don't want to make her sad, uh, but we have to try to let her down gently. I mean, I'm not the person uh, that would uh, go for two people at the same time, unless it's uh, just the day to see which one you like the most. But I would uh, not take it further. A hug is innocent. But I would not kiss any of them uh, uh, until I know certain which one it is I want. Try to let her down gently. I'm glad that you like me so much, but I don't know if I can accept your feelings. We only known one another a week. I'm aware of that, but I think I have a good guess of your character. You are a kind, kind woman. If that were not the case, you would not have befriended Jana despite her status as a pariah in your village. You took that girl under your wing and you ensured she was not lonely. Then when Coco went missing, you vowed to search for her to ensure her safety. You may be brash and impulsive at times, but these uh, defects are not particularly Enrages, and they are not enough to sully your good nature. You are a wonderful person, I think. It would be strange, in fact, if I did not fall in love with you. Every time you call me airy, my heart flutters. When I sleep, I wish I could do so with you in my arms. I have become uh, quite besotted. She says that, but when I did sleep in her bed, she ended up curled up to her and Ayana instead. I could point that out, but I decided not to. It doesn't seem very charitable. Well, it's uh, not always when you like someone that you are able to hold them close. Sometimes you <coughs> go <coughs> turn the other way because you don't want to scare them off. I don't want to foster Ari more than she already is. Oh gee. I uh, don't know if I'm worthy of all that praise. <laughs> Maya have a fear that if she could hear you saying all this. 
I'm sure she did uh, find it hilarious. <laughs> Why is that? Sorry, pout. Maya's not been uh, mistreating you, has she? That's uh, kind of how she is. She mistreats everybody, but she doesn't uh, do it in a serious way. She just likes to poke fun. I made a fool of myself when I first met Maya, and we've been getting into arguments ever since. She's seen a lot of my worst traits, so while at least you only seen the best. I've been trying to behave around you since you're a princess, but I got a pretty short temper and I can be kind of stubborn. I'm not that incredible, not that I'm trying to downplay your feelings. I'm happy you like me, Ari, but it feels too fast. If you knew me a bit better like Ayana and Maya do, your opinion of me would probably change. That's why I can't return your feelings. It wouldn't want to disappoint you. Oh, I see. There's an uncomfortable silence broken only by the soft sighting of the breeze. For a few moments I'm worried I might cry, her brow is furred, her lower lip trembling. But she is eventually able to master her emotions. She swallows them and forces a smile. I'm sorry for kissing you so suddenly. I wanted only to show you how I feel. But it seems I have made a nuisance of myself. I really should be more considerate of other people's feelings. I may be a princess, but the uh, world does not revolve around me. I manage this village, but the uh, world which lies beyond its boundaries is still a mystery to me. I have no authority over your heart, and I know I cannot make you stay here, not if you do not wish to. It would be nice if you if we could spend more time together. But people always come and go, that's how life is. I will not uh, force my wishes upon you, <laughs> it would be unseemly. I will retreat for the present with the grace that is befitting a princess, and I will try to keep uh, my feelings at bay. Good night, my brave knight. Ayana and Coco do not know how fortunate they are having a friend as steadfast as you. Harry smiles at me mainly then uh, pivots on her heel. Pulls a hood over her head obscuring her chestnut brown curls and sets off towards the village gates. Her retreating back uh, gets smaller and smaller until she's swallowed up by the imposing village gates. She ducks back inside her tent and soon vanishes from view. I continue to loiter atop the hill, my heart in turmoil. I raise one trembling on and press her fingertips to my lips. I still feel hot from Ares' sudden, unexpected kiss. What exactly am I supposed to do now? This is also confusing. I finish my shifts at the village watch post and head to bed in the early hours of the morning. I don't sleep in Ares tent as I have been for the last few days. It feels too awkward after I rebuffed her advances. Instead I make my way to the tent Imala set aside for Maya. Maya is already asleep when I get there. She is curled up in a nest of blankets, her choppy lavender hair curling about her cheeks. Maya looks kind of cute when she is asleep, while well, conscious she is uh, forever taking jabs at my Expand, but now she is much more manageable. If only she could uh, be this quiet all the time. Ayana, for the her part, isn't here. I presume she must be in Ares' bedchamber. He has taken quite a liking to her, though not, uh, I think, to the extent she has to me. I can't help but recall Ares' lips upon my own. A faint blush rises to my cheek, and I shake my head. There's no point dwelling on that now, I need to put uh, it from my mind. I undress my limbs laden with the exhaustion and I sink down beside Maya. I pull the covers over myself and look my weary body in the warmth and wait for sleep to come. Yeah? Ja, ja, wake up. Mm, no. 
I go on on about the contrast and curl it up into my uh, ball. Just five more minutes. I don't know how long I've been out for, but it doesn't feel like nearly long enough. I had a l night yesterday, and I like to get a bit more shot eye. I know I have to be awake uh, pretty early so I can go hunting, but all these late nights and early mornings are having an impact on my stamina. I'm very energetic by nature, but I'm not uh, infatuable. Uh, I have my limits. I'm sorry, Jaira, but I can't uh, give you five more minutes, no matter how cute you look while you're sleeping. We have a visitor. Uh, now, that, uh, now that sounds serious, I wonder what's going on. I jumped and forced my, both my eyes open. Nice kneeling in front of me, she smiles uh, that cat-like manner of her when uh, our eyes meet. There offers the uh, top of my head. She find my way? Thank goodness. If you were to keep uh, insisting upon five more minutes, I would have slipped a frog between your cleavage. <laughs> okay, that does not sound fun. A frog? Full of faith. Where would you get one of those? The nearest river's all right up. Don't oh, no, underestimate me. I have my ways. Remember, I am a witch. Yeah, yeah. Like I could forget that. You only mention it like every other day. That is uh, because you fail to regard me with the respect I rightfully deserve. Whatever. I go. Then hold a hand to my temple. It's throbbing. I think I can feel the beginning of a headache. I wonder how much shot I got yesterday. I can't have been much more than four or five hours. I'm usually pretty good at waking up. Ayana is the one who <coughs> struggles in the morning. But this is pretty rough even for me. I'm sleeping for nine hours a day. <laughs> or usually more. The longest I ever slept, I think it was uh, 12 hours. And uh, that's nothing. Because I know I can sleep longer than 12 hours easily. I think the longest I would be able to sleep if I actually would not want to actually get up would actually be 15 hours. Oh well, I'm awake now so I got to try to deal with it. I glance about the tent and soon my eyes lock onto a dose of an interlooper. There's a third person in a tent standing a little ways behind my eye, but it, it isn't a Yana or Ari. It's a Mala, isn't it? It is instead. Of course. Good morning, Yaya. Could you apologize for disturbing you? I think she's uh, a demon or something. I was right. Your sleeping face is uh, very charming. It seems a waste to wake you, but I feel I had no other choice. I hope you can forgive me for this in position. Mama, my friend. I think her uh, priestess is smiling at me. General as ever, but her company makes me feel uneasy. Not for the first time. My warning flits, <coughs> flits through my head. I do not know what she is planning, or if, indeed, she is planning anything. But it is best to be careful. Why is she here? Has she come to set her nefarious plans into motion, whatever they may be? I've only just gotten up, but I'm instantly on my guard. It doesn't help that I'm only particularly dressed. The rest of my clothes are still strewn <coughs> on the floor. I got ready for bed pretty haphazardly last night. I was so exhausted I didn't think to prioritize cleanliness. My mind was too caught up in thoughts uh, pertaining to the princess. Could that be why Imola is here? Am I going to be punished for daring to kiss a princess? It's not like it was my fault. I didn't make the first move. I'm innocent here. Why you are here? Is something wrong? You could say that. I suppose in the early hours of this morning, while the sun was still rising, I was visited by a most worrying premonition. A premonition. A frown. You mean a prediction? Indeed, 
It tells of a grave misfortune that will soon befall the village. It has been uh, playing on in my mind for hours since. I knew I could not uh, remain quiet, that is why I am here. And it is why I intruded so rudely upon your slumber. I fear this village will need the ever capable pair of hands it has. We must all come together and defend this village's uh, <coughs> walls from impending doom. Doom, huh? I stretch limbering up. I feel a little more awake now and oddly enough reassured. This can't uh, be about the kiss I shared with Ari last night. There's no way Ari ill placed the order for me could rain doom upon this whole village. What is this all about then? It's something bad going to happen. It's a village on the attack. Not that the present now, now as we speak, all is quiet and peaceful, but it shall not remain that way. By midday, I anticipate this village will be <coughs> will come under siege. By what? Another village? Not quite, no. It's a worrying situation to contemplate, but... The mother draws a breath, her grey eyes narrowed. It seems we will be attacked by an army of slimes. S slimes? My mouth falls open in her arm. The lost vestiges uh, of sleep which still clung to me, my, <coughs> me like droplets of water, have been well and truly shaken away. If Imola is right, uh, and I see no reason why she would lie, this village is uh, in real danger. I recall the night my own village was assaulted by slabs. I hid away in my parents' tent at the behest, and I didn't see all that much, but I could hear the chaos outside. There was the screaming, homes were destroyed, families were separated. Then... That was the last time I ever saw Coco. Nobody was killed during the attack, but a few people were injured, or our crops were destroyed, our homes uh, rendered uninhabitable. It took almost a year to rebuild. I don't want to live through that again. I don't uh, want anybody to live through that again. How many slimes uh, were there, Himala? Were there a lot? They were indeed. The numbers seem to have swelled over time. We have uh, been attacked by slants on numerous occasions, but they were always trivial to dispatch. This time, however, it seems they mean to give us a real fight. Those who can will need to arm themselves. We must uh, prepare for the worst. The more expression is grim. It doesn't fill me with a lot of confidence. I is there a chance we might lose? There's always a chance of failure, yes, but do not uh, fixate on such matters. It will only worry you. How can I help, uh, help but worry? This isn't the best news to wake up to. I don't want anybody to get hurt because of those monsters. Not again. I can't let them win, damn it. Then I trust you will be willing to defend our village when the time comes. Of course, those lands have hurt way... Uh, too many people. I can't let them get away with this. I thought you uh, you might say that. You are very passionate, Jaja. I appreciate that. It will be a great boon in the coming hours when uh, we finally face off against these monsters. With you on our side, going in the village, we should be in with a fighting chance. Let us make those monsters regret they ever dared to trifle with us. That goes without saying. It'd be a lie if I say I wasn't unnerved by Imala's news, but I'm not going to back down from this fight. I protect this village as uh, I never could my own. And I protect Ayana too. I can tell you are uh, rearing for a skirmish idea, but you should uh, exercise some caution. I would not want you getting hurt. Promise me you won't do anything foolhardly. Uh, as if I would. I'm a warrior, you know. I'm not stupid. That is debatable. My lips cross and I scowl. You don't go uh, doing much for my self-esteem here. It's almost like you want to watch me fail. Who? Me? Never. I have only your best interest at heart. Yeah, right. It's true. I care for you. And that is why I will not let you fight these monsters alone. 
I should be uh, shoring up my strength for the ritual, but uh, we should be able to dispatch up a few pesky times. I'll make those monsters pay if they dare to touch a single hair upon your head. Will you also aid those in our efforts to protect the village, Maya? I shall, yes. I may be a witch, but I am a magnanimous. Yeah, I have no idea how to pronounce that correctly. I have, a, I have a dedicated much of my life to helping others. This is nothing new for uh, to me. And I could not stand uh, it if those slimes made my adorable area cry. That is my job and mine alone. <laughs> oh my. What a complex relationship you must have. I must say I'm intrigued. <laughs> Knock it out, my... Maya, I'm not a little kid. I don't need you to protect me. And caught it uh, with all this weird sounding crap. You're giving Imola the wrong ID. Or not, Jaya. You needn't give me much uh, credence or to what I think. I would never judge you uh, for your taste, no matter how unique they may be. I'm glad you and Maya care for one another. Often I have wished I have the man no relationship with my princess. But I suppose it would be greedy to ask for too much. Imola giggles again while I groan. Forget the slimes. Maya and Imola make a devastating combination. Much more dangerous than, if not more to my physical health than my mental health. I'm exhausted already and I haven't picked up my weapon yet. Interested as I am about your relationship, I will have to drop uh, that uh, line of inquiry. Time is of the essence, and the slimes will soon be upon us. You will have to regale me with the uh, specifics uh, at a later point. <laughs> uh, as if I'm gonna do that. I'm not the uh, sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm not a complete moron. And Mona is obnoxious enough with her creepy giggling without giving her a bunch of free ammo to use against me. Now I will return to the princess tent. There is much I need to discuss with her. The two of you can wait here if you like. I shall return in due course to issue orders. I will not let uh, those offer the slides they seize to the village so not on my life. My princess has worked tirelessly to maintain the peace. It would be awful <laughs> were anything to happen. I will not let anything or anybody make her cry. Imala leaves the tent and Maya soon follows, claiming she wants to go for a walk. I sit uh, for a while on my own, contemplating the worrying news Imola told me about. Soon slimes will attack this village, the past might as well be repeating itself. That's quite a worrying thought. I think about seeking Ayana out so I can inform her about this, but I don't get the chance. The tent opens and Ayana herself arrives before I had an opportunity to get to my feet. Ayana looks uh, even more anxious than her usual, her brow forward and her face uncommonly pale. We are alright, Ayana. You look like you have seen a ghost. I did not have a spiritual encounter, no, but I think that it would be almost preferable to what really happened. What is it? I shall Ayana down onto a cushion and bid her to sit. She's shaking so much I'm afraid her legs might give way beneath her. She looks so delicate, I can't help but want to uh, pamper her. What's going on? I was preparing a tonic for the princess headaches this morning alongside her fellow shamans. When Imola arrived, she told us. She said, and her voice turns off and she winds her on about her legs, briefing her knees beneath her shin and shivers. I think I can guess where this confession is going. Did Imola tell you about the slimes? Y yeah, yes. That's right. It's all very alarming. I take it you uh, heard about this already then? Yeah. The mother swam by the tent this morning and she already told me. I see. 
that is good then I would hate to uh, be the bearer of bad news uh, on the sites I wish I could say I've grown as a person after our village was attacked but I'm still afraid I didn't think we would have to face those monsters again I thought this village would uh, be safe maybe that was naive of me I still have uh, nightmares about them sometimes what if they overrun this village and he did her old one? I don't want to be parted from you or Maya. I can't bear the thought of losing anybody else. Ayana, it'll be alright. Don't worry so much. I kneel down by Ayana's side and rest my hands upon her shoulder. Her skin feels warm against my paws and her body is certainly solid. I won't let those slimes hurt you. I fend them off with my spear so that you never have to look at them. You just be you be just fine. But, but, but then you would be putting yourself in harm's way. I can't stand the thought of you going against those creatures. I'm not happy about it either. If I'm being totally honest, but I've been waiting for an opportunity like this for a while. I want a rematch with those monsters. They might have destroyed our village, but they won't get away with their <coughs> villainly this time. Now, I said I would protect you, and that is precisely what I'm going to do, after all. I'm leaning closer to her until our foreheads are almost bumping. I do love you. It'd be pretty uncool of me if I let you get hurt. Oh, Jaja. I and I meet mine. We look at one another soundlessly for a few moments then. Thank you. Anna smiles in a faint to tremendous sort of smile, but it's a smile nonetheless. I appreciate it. And I love you too. And that's <laughs> this episode. I save every episode just in case. But well, that was all I have for Sakura Forest Girls 2 this time, then, so hit like and subscribe, and see you next time. Bye bye!